So in this video, I'll make a bold statement. Your drone camera settings are probably wrong. I mean, I know mine were way back in the day, learning and learning so much. I can't wait to share this with you and share some wisdom the M0A and Remote Pilot 101 team has here. Hey, real quick, we're still giving away that DJI Avada FPV drone. Head over to m0acontest.com, link down below as well to sign up for that uh, and, and get entered to win. I wanna pass the baton off now to John. John is actually employee number one at m0a.com, has become just a valued team member and friend over the many, many years we've been working it together. And he's really one of the reasons, along with many other team members, that you've seen our video quality continue to step up uh, over the years. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to John now. Hi, I'm John from M0A Online Ground School and I'm the Director of Video Production at M0A. I'm a remote pilot as well as a ground instructor and I fly a DJI Mavic 3. Drone photography has the same basic principles as all photography. And the five most important settings are shutter speed, aperture, ISO, white balance, and your capture settings. Let's get started with exposure. Exposure has three main ingredients. They are ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. We refer to these three settings as the exposure triangle, and we adjust these settings to achieve certain results. On your screen is a diagram of the values for my drone's camera to show you how we can adjust the exposure. To illustrate how ISO affects an image, I produced a series of test images. These images were all shot with the aperture closed down to f11, and shot at a relatively fast shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. So our lowest ISO setting is 100 for this camera. ISO 100 is the least light sensitive setting, so it's ideal for bright days. Higher ISOs are more light sensitive, so you can see as we increase the ISO in this series, we increase the image brightness. You can also see as we increase ISO to 6400, the image is seriously overexposed. In general, it's best to use the native ISO of the camera whenever possible, because increasing or decreasing ISO from this native setting increases noise. The next element of the exposure triangle is aperture. Aperture is the ratio of a lens's focal length to the diameter of the entrance pupil. Like your eyes, lenses have the ability to adjust how much light they let through. The wider the opening, the more light comes through. There's a trade-off, however. A lens that's more open has a shallower depth of field. However, with the sensor size of most consumer drones, the depth of field is not much of a factor unless you're very close to your subject. For the Mavic 3, our full stops of aperture are f2.8, f4, f5.6, f8, and f11. We see with this series of test images that our widest aperture of f2.8 produces the brightest image. As we stop down and the f-stop numbers increase, we allow less light into the camera. One somewhat confusing part of f-stops is that our full stops are f1, 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, and so on. The reason for this is the inverse square law, which states that the intensity of light varies with the inverse square of the distance to the source. Each stop, you remember, is half as much light as the previous stop. So as we go from 1 to 1.4, the square of 1.4 is about 2. And that's the reason that 1.4 is a full stop above 1. And 2 is two stops above 1, meaning that it allows one quarter of the light through. The final part of the exposure triangle is shutter speed. And this is the simplest one to understand because it's simply a measure of time that the shutter is open. It's measured in parts of a second. And the DJI Mavic 3, we have the ability to go from 8 seconds, which is a very long exposure, all the way down to a short exposure of 1 8th 
thousandths of a second. The longer the shutter is open, the more light comes through. And we can see with this test series that keeping the shutter open for 1 8th of a second at ISO 100 and F11 on a bright day leads to an overexposed image while shortening the exposure down to 1 240th of a second gives us a slightly underexposed image. Slower shutter speeds allow in more light and increase the amount of motion blur an image has. Faster shutter speed freezes action but allows in less light. So it's important to remember if we change one element in the exposure triangle, we need to adjust other settings to reach the correct exposure again. An old rule of thumb from film photography is to estimate exposure on a sunny day and it's called the sunny 16 rule. It says that on a bright sunny day, if we set our aperture to F16, our shutter speed will be the reciprocal of the ISO. Since the Mavic 3 doesn't have F16 as an option, our closest f-stop is F11, which is a stop faster than F16. So on a sunny day at F11 with an ISO of 100, our shutter speed would be 1 200th of a second. Antique film cameras had charts like these on the back of them so that the photographers could estimate their exposure values. Can you imagine if you had to just guess what your exposure was gonna be? Now we have meters in our cameras and we get to see a lot more information about the exposure. We get to see our histograms, the zebra markings that might show overexposed areas, as well as an MM meter or an EV meter, which shows you an exposure value. But if you really wanna learn photography, Finding an old antique camera without a meter and exposing some film is a great way to train yourself to see light. On your screen, you see two images that were shot to demonstrate the Sunny 16 roll. The one on the left was shot at ISO 100 F11 at 1 200th of a second. The one on the right at ISO 200 F11 and 1 400th of a second. They look identical, because they are equivalent exposures. Let's look at the metering information for my Mavic 3. On the left side of the screen, you see the histogram. And on the bottom right hand side, you see the meter showing the exposure value. If you look at our histogram, it's pushed to the left side and we are losing some of the dark information in this picture. Our exposure meter indicates that we are two full stops underexposed. So I pushed the ISO from 200 to 800, or two stops, and now our meter shows an exposure value of zero, or correctly exposed. Now our histogram shows a pretty normal exposure curve, with no information being lost on either side. Another setting you should be aware of is white balance. With still photography, you can use auto white balance most of the time. The cameras are actually pretty good about figuring out white balance. Now, especially if you are shooting raw format, because you can always readjust your white balance in post. Raw just means that the camera is preserving every bit of information that's coming from the sensor. It's always my recommended setting for still photography. I also recommend monitoring your histogram or your exposure values to make sure that your exposure is correct, capturing the photos in raw format, using auto exposure brackets for subjects that don't move, and using auto shutter for faster moving subjects. For video, I like to manually set my white balance. I try to follow the 180 degree shutter rule, meaning that if I'm shooting at 60 frames, my shutter speed is 1 120th of a second. If I'm shooting in 30 frames per second, my shutter speed is 1 60th of a second. Now keep the ISO at the native ISO setting to keep the least amount of noise in the image. And on bright days, you're going to use neutral density filters to cut down the amount of light that's allowed into the camera so that you can keep a slower shutter speed in order to follow the 180 degree shutter rule. Again, monitor your histogram, monitor your exposure meter, make sure that you're exposing properly and use the highest possible data rate with the greatest amount of exposure latitude so that you can preserve both dark and light parts of the frame. Honestly, even the auto settings aren't too bad anymore. And if you are just shooting to share a memory, just remember to hit record and have fun flying. Sharing your flights with your friends is exciting because all drone images benefit from the elevated perspective of flight. Experiment with your camera settings 
get out and shoot. If you don't like the image, delete it and learn from the experience. Photography is an art, even if there is a little bit of science to it. But fly more, film more, and share the beautiful things you see with the world. Have a great day. See ya. Thank you for making Remote Pilot 101 the most used Part 107 test prep course on the market. The team here at Remote Pilot 101 has helped thousands of aspiring remote pilots, just like yourself, pass their Part 107 exam with a high score the first time. Visit RemotePilot101.com to become a member for life and learn more.